there's weakness to take advantage of in life and there's weakness to stay away from. And so that's the big debate. Do you step into this weakness and say this is an opportunity or is it something to actually uh, be careful about? I'm in the latter camp in the sense that while one could say short term and we could talk about VIX and other things overdone, you get rebounds, but it's really not about that. It's about the damage that's been sustained and what it does to sentiment and psyche and what it does to many individual charts and to the market. So uh, we think in principle this is something to be very careful and to avoid. Yeah. Investors overall have been conditioned to believe that every single dip has been a buying opportunity. In fact, we've seen that play out in 2015. The worst five-point drops have been followed by one-month average return of 2.33%, according to S&P. That's pretty damn good. Is it going to happen this time, you think? For the broad market, I don't think yeah. so. Well, here's right. something I would point out, right? So the S&P was trading almost 19 times next 12-month estimated earnings before we got into the route that we've just seen. We're now trading about 17 and a half times, which is still a above the long-term average multiple. So if you're trying to use dips as a buying opportunity, the way you should do that is when stocks are cheap. And the S&P, by and large, is not cheap at this level. But I want to make one quick point here. I haven't added to in my net long positions personally since August of 2014, and I did actually today. We're going to get to what name August I put it into, but a couple stocks I think are getting a little bit washed out, and I think that those are the places you're going to want to take advantage. Oh, that's interesting. How about you, yeah. folks? Well, so short term, I did do some buying today, yeah. and short term, I think we could see a bounce, and we'll talk about the VIX and maybe why that's signaling it later on. But I think you saw some panic today. It's an uncertain expiration day. It's a day that a lot of people, as I mentioned before, are going on vacation next week. They just want to get out. So there was a bit of a panic in the market today. So in the short term, I'm playing for a bounce. In the longer run, we'll have to see how this all washes out. Carter talks about sentiment. If you got creamed over the, this month, mm -hmm. you're going to be real reticent to get back in big positions. What That's else? right. And once you draw yeah. down like this, you trap a lot of people above. So you have right. people who, were, who bought in the last three, four, five months. But um, I went back and looked at all instances since 1927 where the S&P has had a 5% plus correction, meaning you go down two or three, it's noise, even four. But once a stock of currency starts to drop more than five, it kicks in and, and accelerates. So there have been 212 times going back to 19, when the S&P has gone down 5% or more. And if you were to look at the median or average uh, drawdown, the median is about 8 and a quarter, and the average is 12 and a half. We're only down 7.6, so we haven't hit the median at 8 and a quarter. And if we were to be average, uh, we've got another uh, 4 or 5% to go, meaning damage uh, problems incur other problems, right? It, it, it makes... Well, we know there's margin calls, things right. like that, de-risking. So that's the, that's the problem. Margin here. calls are certainly one point. The other thing is that if you're looking for somebody to come and support the market, you need to have a lot of deployable cash. And we know that mutual fund cash balances were down. We know that self-directed investor cash balances were down. So it's kind of hard to figure out where the incremental buyer would come in and say, I want to take right. real advantage of this right here. Okay, let's talk about that VIX because uh, that surge above 27 today. That was uh, the first since October. Brian Sutlin is one of the biggest VIX brokers at the CBOE. And, Brian, when we get VIX surges like this, how do stocks usually respond? Well, it's going to get volatile, Melissa. I mean, stocks are probably, they need a lifeline right now. When you look at VIX surges, I mean, take a look at IWM or take a look at some of the other major indexes, the NICE composite. They're basically unchanged now for 20 months. That's dead money, Melissa. And why does that happen? Well, you see this volatility surge that we saw. We haven't seen surges like this in one month time frames since August 1990. You're talking about August 1998 and September 2008. These were huge surges, nearly 100% in all those cases. And you saw gigantic moves in the market after that. Melissa, a year out, when you look at some of these moves, August 1990, the market at least was up 22 percent. August 1998, market up over 30 percent. But hey, September, that September one, we didn't see the markets move. They actually dropped 9 percent over the next year. So you're going to see some major moves in the market. The market really needs a lifeline. When you get these moves, Melissa, it basically the Federal Reserve is going to have to change their policy. That's what happened in the past. All three of those instances, major shifts in Federal Reserve policy following these huge surges.